hello and welcome. It's Rika Kovacin here and I'm doing this card. Let me just check that you can see me or at least <laughs> I can see myself and thus see your questions and comments. Yeah. Here we go. Let me just add the link to the chat where you can see all the supplies and also a link to AB Studio. AB Studio uh, store where there is summer sale going on at the moment. Oh, come on, would you now? Thank you. So, first link to the blog post and then to Maybe studio, <clears throat> sorry. So now they are there. So hello, hello, good evening or day, depending where you are. So I'm recreating this card during this live. It's done with an older collection, let's say. It's not that old. It's released this year anyway, but it's not the from the most current like release like this one this collection is called so much love and as you can see this one is in love with you so if you wish i can show you these papers as well but i'm working with these of course the techniques will apply to any any collection <laughs> It doesn't have to be either of the two. But still a couple of minutes before we start. If you have any questions, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat there so I can reply. But should I miss something, then <clears throat> I'll go through all the comments afterwards if, if there's anything I miss. And like always, you can either ask in English or finish or actually the translator probably will handle most of the languages <laughs> so you can use those as well a couple of words in Finnish should there be some Finnish viewers so <clears throat> then I'll go back to English eli heippa hei tervetuloa seuraamaan liveä tänään on tällaista korttia tarkoitus tehdä pääasiallisesti siis enkuksi tänään mutta et, niin kuin yleensäkin, niin yleensä saa noin myös suomeksi kommentoida. Jos tulee kysymyksiä tai muuta, niin käyn sitten läpi viimeistään live jälkeen kaikki. Tai, tai sitten jos sä tulet huomaamaan tuosta ruudusta nyt, niin vastaan saman tien. Okie dokie, a minute to go and then we'll start. Hei Johanna! Uh, can you see and hear me okay? I'm thinking seeing part should be okay because I can see myself from the screen but of course I have the <laughs> sounds off from the computer so hopefully you can hear me as well. Hey Pamina! Kuten tuossa aikaisemmin sanoin, niin tosiaan suomeksi saa kysyä kommentoida vastaan liven aikana tai sen jälkeen, riippuen kuinka huomaan. Kiitos Minna, näkyy ja kuuluu. Pääasiallisesti hö höpöttelen siis englanniksi. Jei, Minna sä that. Seeing and hearing is okay, so perfect. We are ready to start and it's 7 p.m. here in Finland. So let's get started. Like I said earlier, 
<laughs> this is something I'm redoing today. A little rosy card. I call this Rose Chateau because of the ornate window there. So this one is done using uh, So Much Love collection. Um, the most recent kind of similar collection is in this one, In Love With You. If you want, I can show you these papers as well. But I'm working with this collection. But you can use either one or even older or any any kind of other collection with the same idea. Heippa hei Leena, Mia, Sanna, Kirsi, Maria, Ketkähän, minä unohdin välistä. So, let's start with the card base. For that, <coughs> there's a whole lot of... Let me show you these two sheets first, so I can then just fling them aside as I have already cut the elements. So these two are well loved. Heippa Tarja, heippa Mari! As you can see, only a couple of pieces left, but these are wonderful for die cutting or fussy cutting your own embellishments. And this sheet is called So Much Love, and this one is Love is on the Way. Both are used in the focal point composition. And then the two other papers I'm using are Ocean of Kisses with this kind of news print and then almost solid color looking. I'm not sure if the camera picks this up. There's a really subtle kind of fabric brocade pattern in this one, but it looks almost a solid pink and it's uh, Angel's Heaven. So those actually this side up. Those two make up the base. So let me put that one aside and take the paper cutter. Hey hey Heidi, Anne, Helena, Ellie. <laughs> so now that's vielä kerran on niin kuin se, että suomeksi saa kysyä ehdottomasti. Pääasiallisesti hölpötän englantia, mutta tosiaan ihan kummalla kielellä vaan voi esittää kysymyksiä, jos niitä tulee matkan varrella. Okay, now I need to think. Because funnily enough, this time I actually wrote the measurements for these. So this is 9.9 centimeters times 20.4 normally I don't measure things like this but this time and then this one should be 9 there we go. times 90.5 And why I actually had the measurements this time is that you don't have to watch me struggle to get this. So the solid color is a little bit smaller and then the patterned version is bigger, kind of just making a frame or decor decorative edge there. Before I'm adding these together, I'm distressing the other edge and just using my scissors for this. Heippa Sanna, heippa Emma, heippa Kirsi, heippa Annikki. Anteeksi kaikki, ketkä unohdan sanoa välissä, kun kurkka aina väli, välillä vaan tuohon chattiin. Eli heippa hei kaikille. Hello, hello, welcome. Just doing the first steps. I actually owned two distressing tools, one from Tim Holtz, like the little one. Hi Brian! And then a bigger one from Prima Marketing, but those both were left unused, so I gave them to Better Home because I always use my scissors if I need to distress something. 
it adds just a little touch to the card easily done and also especially when my paper cutter starts to be I need to replace the blade then I usually do distressing because the cut marks aren't that clear anymore and this time I'm doing this just this why am I using just a thin strip of double-sided tape in the middle of the card is because of magic da, 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 da. like so so <laughs> like in this card I then sewed the two layers together I'm not bringing my sewing machine here because actually you couldn't even see anything because the machine would block everything so I prepared one earlier and I used black thread to give it a little bit of contrast and kind of mimicking this black card base I'm then using to mount the whole thing but it adds a little bit like a defined edge because this is so pale lovely but a little bit of edge is needed so now I'm tying these to a little knot hey Toya hey Hanna they are going to be underneath the layer so not even doing this will be would be okay but just make sure just a couple of knots to secure the threads in place then actual medium start first i'm doing a stenciled pattern to the background i'm using this ab studio stencil i think this was called english wallpaper or something like that the code is id310 it's in the blog post if you want to check that out and I said earlier, but let me say again, there is summer sales on ABC Studio at the moment until the end of month. So there's up to 40% discounts at the moment. To make it the dimensional pattern, I'm using Paper Artsy Grunge Paste. Why I'm using this particular paste is that it's really thick so you can get a nice crisp image but also because it's thick it dries quickly so in, when doing a live that's really handy <laughs> just using a palette knife and co covering most of the pink part as this is kind of lace like stencil anyway so there's still gaps and it still kind of breathes I'm not getting a solid pattern there if you have watched my lives earlier now it's the time for the water bucket it's underneath the table and I'm just toshing the stencil there and cleaning it afterwards palette knife to my rag and that's done then we need to turn this into that and that's really easy this window is from, from a bigger package with uh, I've used a couple so probably an eight different chipboard windows in the packaging ID 307 let me throw that away if you want a white window so there's nothing peeking underneath like here then first cover this with hey, bye, hey, Kati. <laughs> first cover this with white gesso but as I kind of like it so it looks a little bit worn i'm just applying the paste straight to the win window and this is crackle paste 
Nina Bar white crackle paste. I'm trying to get different thickness of the paste here and there because that is then how the crackles are of different sizes. When there's a thicker layer of the paste there's going to be bigger cracks and when there's just a thin layer then there's going to be just teeny tiny cracks. So it's like icing a cake. Really not that difficult or <laughs> or hard. Just applying the paste with a palette knife and then leave it air dry. Crackle paste always, if you have the possibility, leave them air dry because otherwise the cracks won't be as lovely as, as if they can just dry for themselves. So that's why I have another window already done with the crackle paste and already crackled. Let me try to show you it from a little bit up close. And I in the frame thereabouts. So there's the bigger ones, bigger crackles, and then smaller ones depending how much paste there is. A really easy way to turn a like blank chipboard piece into something, just adding a crackle paste layer on top. Then one more element. Ooh, there. for the layering and that's these like these delicate leaves here for that I'm using an AB Studio stop watermark ink and white embossing powder well, let's not open that one yet because I'm so hazardous so I would probably just tip it down Hey Panna Marit! Hey Pamervi! Oh Anna Marit is doing a Christmas card Perfect I haven't started yet I actually have no idea what I'm doing this this year last year I asked for my husband what color Christmas card we are doing and from all the colors he could have chosen he said yellow <laughs> so that was a little bit interesting choice and of course I then had to come up with something that would use yellow but it, it was an interesting project because not the first color when you think of Christmas card that yellow so probably not yellow this year something else this part is probably looking quite dull because you can't even see the stamped images there but they are there. When I add the powder on top, then they come visible. Actually, you can see just a teeny tiny bit on them from the camera as well. That's good. Whenever I'm doing something like this, like self-made embellishments, I usually do extra. So for this card, I'm probably using just two which I already actually have ready there, but still I'm doing four because I can then leave these to my stash and whenever I'm in a hurry or just want to do a card quite quickly, I can then grab some of these leaves and use them and still there's like handmade embellishments, but I don't have to start from scratch. And let's heat this one.
are visible now. As you can see, I didn't brush these off, the extras, because I'm going to cut the leaves loose anyway, so they don't matter. Well, to be honest, I don't even brush those away if I'm <laughs> doing a layer that I'm not cutting that well loose. Maybe some, but I'm more like, well, I'm a messy crafter in that way. But especially when I'm then cutting the leaves loose like this, I can go around those extra little things. Anna Marit says that she watched Hades live. She's a Finnish crafter, both of them actually. She's Anna Marit and Heidi. And I know Heidi did some winter or Christmas ATCs. And she used texture paste, snowflake stencil, and distress ink, which gave the, or that's the animated idea. That actually sounds really lovely. That could be something to keep in mind. We usually do Christmas card cards, whole family. So I'm always trying to think something that we can all, all participate. So it's not just me doing the cards and then sending them out, but more like a little workshop of Christmas cards is happening on some weekend. And we have Christmas or gingerbread, Christmas cookies and malt wine or what that's called, Glögi, the alcohol free version. So the whole family can drink and then we craft the Christmas cards. Let me put those aside for a while and then let's see if the base is now dry already or shall we do some fussy cutting. Almost there. So I'm thinking that just a quick dry and we are ready to continue. Emma is asking if this is vellum, eli on, on kultapaperia. Yeah, that was vellum where I did the leaves. So these are kind of see-through. Sorry for not say, saying that. I did remember to say the ink and embossing powder, but forgot about the base. Sorry. So now we have the background done. So there's the two papers and then just modeling paste or in this case grunge paste, but it's really thick modeling paste. On top I'm adding some color. Usually, hey papa baby! Usually I'm steering away from really harsh contrasts. I'm more like going... Oh, how is it? Analogous color schemes. Like if there's red, so there can be uh, then orange and yellow, kind of those color schemes. But in this case, I actually add some green to this one, kind of making a garden look with that. I'm adding green and then this kind of tea color brownish tone to keep it a little bit um, vintagey or toned down. Now that there is no gesso layer, you can see that the paper absorbs the colors almost immediately. So if you want more play time with color, add either a layer of white gesso, which then of course changes the colors, but a layer of clear gesso underneath and then you have more time to play with 
any kind of water based medium like watercolors or inks because they don't get absorbed to the background immediately when you put the brush down. Then some splashes. Now the stencil pattern, <coughs> sorry, stencil pattern kind of hides the harsh edge between the painted and unpainted areas, but it's still fun way to kind of break that area with splashes and also that adds another little interesting detail there. Then I'm moving these aside. We are using them in one other thing later on, so I'm not putting them totally away. But let's now quickly dry the watercolor. thereabouts. Not totally dry, but it's okay. And then stamp and ink. This is a really, really delicate stamp with just these little dots appearing. So I'm using just black archival ink. If this would be more of a solid pattern, I probably would choose a more delicate color like watering can. Okay, now there's something wrong. No? Yes, working again. Hopefully that doesn't come again. But yeah, um, if there would be more of a solid pattern, I probably would do something like, a, uh, what's it called, gray ink instead of black. But that's, it's just delicate dots and I have that black line kind of frame going on already. I'm okay with black. This particular stamp is ID 1020. It's funny because the AB Studio stamps most of the time have just a number of codes and there's no names to them. So, whenever I'm doing a voiceover for the video also, it's fun to say the numbers. Now there's a little bit of stamping, another little layer, but kind of echoing that same black and adding a little more interest to the background. Then we start the composition. I'm using this. Hey Mila! This is tool. If I'm not horribly mistaken, it's something like Merry Widow Wailing because of those little dots here. But you could use delicate lace as well or even gauze. Whoops. Okay, now there's a bigger rip than I attempted. No worries. And I'm now going around the edges a little bit tearing it. Not that much. That wasn't my attention to do that much, but it's okay. It's going to be underneath here. And it gives a little bit of texture when I'm tearing it, so it's not that cut looking anymore. To secure it, I'm just adhering this chipboard on top using a sturdy glue. The other option would be to add a couple of stitches there to secure it. But if you are gluing it, then be really careful not to overdo it. Because easily when you glue something as delicate and fluffy like this, if you glue it totally down, it kind of loses its nature. It's not that 
fluffy and fabric looking anymore. Let's put that one there for a while. Come on. Then we have the leaves to be put in. Then we have the flowers. These I cut before the live from those she sheets I showed you earlier. So much love, the two sheets. The other one has this kind of cluster, little bouquet of flowers. And the other sheet has these single flowers, which then go well to kind of make the cluster a little bit fuller. So for example, here underneath, that's one bigger composition of flowers and then their singles added on top to make it a bit fuller. Let's see if yeah, that's okay. For these I'm using just glue. But with wellum that might cause some interesting things to happen. Let's see. Nope, now they're behaving nicely. Sometimes when you add glue or other kind of moist things to vellum, they start to curl. This time they are behaving nicely. And then I'm probably adding this one or maybe that one because I'm probably covering the other anyway. Okay, now you can decide. Are we going to do uh, pink and... Okay, three options. Pink and white flowers, just pink flowers or just white flowers. I'm waiting for your... Oh, no, it's curly. Waiting for your answer. Let me say that in Finnish as well. Eli tehdäänkö kokonaan valkoisia, kokonaan pinkkejä vai sekoituskukkia? Mahdollisuus valita. Hello Karen. Oh, thank you for the accent. I have been told that my accent is all over the place. One time I'm uh, sounding like Australian and the next something from some part of USA I can't remember, and then British, so I'm like all over the place. <laughs> but great, great that you make out of my silly babbling. Pinky valkoinen and pink and white. Okay, there's two votes for the mixed version. A quick zip of water. So let's do that. Let's use this one as it's the mix. A brand new roll of foam tip. If you don't have foam tape, you can always add a piece of, of cardboard boxes to make these flowers a bit more dimensional or then the foam squares. I've started to use the foam tape some time ago because, you know, those little foam squares, the covering parts that you take away, they were everywhere. So, and I'm always using quite a lot. So it's easier for me to use a bigger roll of tape than the teeny tiny just squares. Now where do I put this? Somehow I'm wanting to put it underneath, but it's too big there. Let's try that one. Well, it's foam tape, so I can lift it up. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Aga! Then let's put this one here. Let's 
make it a little bit shorter so it's more easily put yeah there and that needs some adhesive as you can see when i'm building the cluster or even a bigger composition i'm not planning that much ahead i have this time something that i'm striving for or an idea perhaps but i'm just adding things down and then going from there and that gives me more speed let's say because Every time I adhere something, it's a decision made, and then I have to work around it rather than playing around with the flowers quite a few different times because there's unlimited amount of options if you don't put anything down. And this way, just immediately tucking something down is then... Uh, my, well, my means to keep it going and not to be cornered with too many options. So, I'm thinking that's the way I'm leaving it this time. So there's dimension, there's like flowers peeking here and there. And you saw when I first added these leaves, they were quite far apart. Because I knew that I'm going to put the flowers in between, so there's no need for me to put the leaves right on top of each other, because then they won't be showing at all. And now, the other use for watercolors. These flowers from the collection are lovely, but to add a little bit of kind of your own handprint on them it's really easy you can use the same colors as you did with the background and a small brush and just go over you don't have to paint perfectly just touch the leaves and the flowers with the watercolor what i did here is kind of bringing your own handprint to them making them more a part of the background and the composition and things than just leaving them the way they are. And as you can see, I don't paint perfectly. I just add it. If you don't have watercolors, but you have water soluble inks like distress inks, those work perfectly as well. Just adding a little touch of color to them that might do all the difference in the world especially if you would be more patient than me and actually paint them accordingly then they would, would seem more like hand painted flowers and not something from a collection so that's a little trick for you to use in cards or in other crafts as well. Then let's mount this one to this one and finish the card with a couple of pearls. The first go I only added the double-sided tape to the smack center because of the sewing. Now I'm going around the whole thing. When I use the double-sided tape to add here the two layers together before sewing, uh, it's because of two reasons. When I put it here in the middle, the two layers are going to stay put and allow me to sew them together. But also, if I would put them around the edges and then sew, the needle in the sewing machine would get all sticky. And that might then cause some tearing and not a good sewing 
so oh, steam that's the word especially if it then turn into clothing or starts using the sewing machine for something else than paper so that's why i added the first strip just in the middle of the paper not to get a sticky needle so almost done finishing is just with a couple of black half pearls there's a good spot for one and let's put one there and then a bit smaller ones how come there's a hair in these that one I think we need a third place like a triangle maybe there let's try and somehow hmm this side or this side again you can decide right or left Oikea vai vasen? Mihin tehdään vielä kolmas? Where to put the kind of third corner of the triangle? And now there's always the gap. I can use that to take a sip of water. Oikea, oikea. So right hand side it is. Actually that's something that my eye would be also creating something there let's use a teeny tiny one okay it's not so tiny it's stuck in my finger now and then just one ah where are the hairs coming from one there I'm thinking that is it. So here's the first one and here's the second one. And that's that's it. <laughs> it's done. Now it's your time for questions and also if you want to see the new collection because I have it here. If you want to see the papers from In Love With You because these cards, like I said earlier, are done using the so much love. Just an um, easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy card using beautiful papers and some mixed media touches. Thank you for coming. And well, I'm guessing nobody's saying that they want to see the collection, so I'm guessing this is it. So thank you so much for coming. Kiitoksia kaikille todella paljon. And I hope you got some new ideas or had a lovely time, <laughs> if not new ideas. And well, I'll be seeing you next month. There's two lives coming up. One in Finnish and one in English. Eli ensi kuussa on taas tulossa kaksi liveä. Tällä kertaa toinen suomeksi, toinen englanniksi, kun tässä kuussa oli kaksi liveä ja molemmat englanniksi. Thank you so much. And have a great day, evening or morning, depending where you are. If you have any questions, I'll be keeping an eye in the chat afterwards when the recording is playing and also I'm putting the recording to my YouTube. So thank you so much. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you. Bye.